another episode of Exploring Genetics. Uh, here around my neck and arm is Big Dan. This is our Dominican Red Mountain Boa male. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this video is because we got a comment uh, just kind of asking us to differentiate between Haitian boas, which I have occasionally referred to them as, and Dominican Red Mountain Boas, saying they're different things, don't, don't confuse people and call them the same thing. So I uh, wanted to dive deeper into this, and I got deep enough that we decided it probably should be one of these uh, more technical exploring genetics videos, uh, because it does get a little complicated. I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. Uh, I hope that it doesn't just kind of wash over you or bore you or anything. Those of you who are interested in this stuff, I hope that you can learn something. Those of you who are not, I'm not offended. Um, the reason I'm here is so that I can use this wonderful whiteboard that you see before you to uh, <laughs> indicate some of the names that we're going to be throwing out here. And I have to throw out this disclaimer, I do not speak Latin, I will butcher these names, okay? just. Know that from the beginning. So, Duly noted. Up until recently, 2013 or so, so very recently, this snake and others like it were classified in the scientific community as the genus Epicrates. Okay? That is the same genus as Brazilian rainbow boas. So they were thought to be extremely close. Generally, species within the same genus are thought to be very, very, very closely related. Um, and then, you know, there were various different species designated within that genus. However, uh, a scientist was kind of making his life's work out of these West Indian boa species, and he dug way deeper into their genetics, the fossil record, all the things that scientists use to determine what a species is and what it isn't. Um, and he decided that this clade... Uh, which is just a scientific word for a group of related species, uh, was different enough and must have evolved long enough ago from the mainland, you know, South American and Central American Epicrates species that they might deserve their own genus. So he went over, he took several trips over to the Dominican Republic uh, and probably other places around there too because he has data from the Bahamas and from all, all over Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and um, this whole group of the West Indian boas, right? So, at the conclusion of his research, he had all the data from the genetics and the fossils and uh, morphological features, you know, what they look like, how many subcaudal scales they count, and, and all that different things that people use to determine which species a given animal is. And he decided, uh, not decided, but discovered rather, that there are 10 species within the uh, genus of the West Indian boas. He also changed the genus name. He removed them from the Epicrates and reclassified them as Chilobothrys. All right, so the genus that we are working with now is no longer Epicrates. Dominican red mountain boas are not Epicrates uh, striatus, is the species name, but the genus is not Epicrates, they are Chilobothrys which incidentally, Chilobothrys means no heat pits, right? If you can zoom in on his nose a little bit on his lips, I'll move a little too if I need to. No? Okay, I'm, I'm getting the, the no. Uh, only one of the ten species within Chilobothrys actually has labial heat pits. Um, so they're kind of strange that way. Most of the boas and pythons do have heat pits, but these guys do not. Um, so I'm going to show you here on my beautiful whiteboard the 10 species of Chilobothrys that he has, uh, that this scientist has discovered, and then we'll talk about Striatus, the species that we work with, okay? So, we have Chilobothrys chrysogaster, Chilobothrys exul, Chilobothrys Fortii, Chilobothrys gracilis, Chilobothrys inornatus, Chilobothrys yeah. monensis, Chilobothrys striatus, Chilobothrys stridulatus, and Chilobothrys subflavus. 
so 10 species right and some of these look extremely similar others are a little bit different I know there's a I think they call it a Hispaniolan vine snake or vine boa something like that much more slender smaller snake uh, but mostly these snakes share a lot of the same features and look pretty similar um, we are concerned with Chilobothrus striatus, right? That's the what, where the uh, Dominican Red Mountain Boas are classified. Now, as most of you know, species is unfortunately not the final designation. Sometimes uh, they're broken down further into subspecies, right? This occurred with Chilobothrus striatus. So I'm going to go through some of the subspecies. Um, he discusses some of the Bahamian species, subspecies of Chilobothrus striatus. Those are Chilobothrus striatus fosteri, Chilobothrus striatus fowleri, and Chilobothrus striatus stridulatus. So those species, uh, those subspecies rather, of Chilobothrus striatus are found in the Bahamas. Okay. Uh, most of these species, in fact, are found on islands or archipelagos, you know, groups of islands. Um, but uh, we are concerned with the final group, right? The Haitian boas, as it were, that, that brought this whole question about, okay? Um, so these three subspecies are endemic to, they're found only on uh, the island of Hispaniola, which is the countries of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Okay, so that you can see why they could be called a Haitian boa, because they're found in Haiti, right? So the, well, I'm going to refer to them right now as Hispaniolan boas, because they're found somewhere on the island of Hispaniola, all right? Including our guy here. We have Chilobothrus striatus warrenae, Chilobothrus striatus exegistus, and Chilobothrus striatus striatus. Now, we have an interesting dilemma. This paper only came out six years ago. These guys have been around for a lot longer than that. A lot longer than that. Some of the big names in the reptile world have been working with these for a long time. Um, so I can't imagine that hobbyists knew the differences, or even if they thought they knew, I can't imagine they actually knew the differences between these subspecies of Hispaniol and Boas especially if any one of those subspecies might have a bright red face. The head shape's the same. The overall size is similar. The diet is the same. They're crepuscular animals, which means they come out mostly um, in the early, early, early morning and then the, the twilight, right? So not really the middle of the night like a nocturnal animal. But anyways, my point is I can't imagine that hobbyists knew the difference between these animals so I also would assume that all three of those Hispaniola and subspecies when they were being gathered up and, and imported into the United States were just sold as Haitian boas right and then really nice red ones were eventually rebranded as Dominican red mountain boas now this is going to bother a lot of people who are really into Dominican red mountain boas. They don't want to hear this, that they could have muddied up the genes a little bit with the other two, you know, the Warren Eye and the Exegistus, I think it was. But uh, I think that it could have occurred, at least sometimes. Maybe a few of them were real experts and they saw little tiny differences and they're like, ah, I don't think this is quite the same thing, so I'm not going to sell it and make any money off it because I don't want... I, you know, that just doesn't seem realistic to me for, for especially the way that the reptile hobby was in the 80s and 90s. Not that people were liars necessarily, but just the amount of knowledge. They were the pioneers trying to build up that knowledge, right? So if the scientific community only decided six years ago that these are the species and these are the subspecies, and my belief is that there's probably all three of those subspecies floating around being bred between each other in captivity and we're calling all of them Dominican Red Mountain Boas. To me, it would be most accurate to call them Hispaniolan Boas because whether they're only found on the far west or the far east of the island, only in uh, Haiti or, or the Dominican Republic, they're still on the island of Hispaniola. So to me, that's the most accurate to call them a Hispaniolan Boa. 
Um, Dominican red mountain boa is just another common name that someone came up with to kind of describe them. They are from the Dominican Republic. They are, I'm sure they could be found up in the mountains there, and they often are red. So it's a very good descriptive name, but they're not necessarily different from a Haitian boa, right? Now, there are other species of boas that can be called Haitian boas. This is the problem with common names, guys. Scientific names are much more useful for this because you're not going to say these two different species have the same scientific name. They don't. Now, two different species might have the same common name. That happens all the time, unfortunately. We get confused. But there are other snakes that can be called a Haitian boa. And I don't want to confuse this guy, sorry, but for one of those, right? So I'm trying to decide right now as I'm speaking, maybe I should stop referring to them at all as Haitian boas and either just go with Dominican Red Mountain boa or, or Hispaniolan boa. I'm not really sure. Um, and I kind of, I'm hoping for some feedback for some, from some of the top names in the reptile hobby who work with this species. Uh, I might go, there's a Facebook group for them. If you're interested in the species, you really should check that out, the Dominican Red Mountain Boa Facebook page or whatever it is. But uh, I go on there a lot. They've got some great information on there, some, some awesome hobbyists and breeders and all that. But uh, I'm going to kind of try and reach out to some of them and, and see what they think about all this because um, I think it's important to be accurate in the reptile hobby. We've come such a long ways from just importing waves of animals and selling them off as whatever. Uh, where you know people people have put an enormous amount of work towards building up a knowledge base not just on how to raise them and how to breed them but also what they are where they came from what the scientific background of these animals is so um, I don't want this video to go much longer it's already gone on too long I'm sure but uh, I will be getting deeper into this whole concept of what is a species how do you decide that something is a new species right if this species can breed with this species and they produce totally viable offspring that can also breed is it really two different species that's one way people look at it but if that were the case then a polar bear and a grizzly bear are the same thing and a tiger and a lion are the same species and obviously that's not true so anyway um, we'll get deeper into that idea of speciation um, some we might talk a little bit about um, the way biodiversity works on islands specifically, it's a pretty cool concept. Um, regardless, I've got to finish, got to put him back, um, but he's been great. Uh, I'll show him off here to the camera for a minute, um, and I will let you all go. Please let me know what you thought of this video. I hope it wasn't too just, you know, chucking information at you that isn't that interesting. Um, but uh, hopefully that was useful to some of you. I know there are some people who watch our videos that are very interested in these, in these boas, so I did want to um, get a little deeper into them. Thank you for watching, and uh, this has been Exploring Genetics with the Reptile Barn.